Welcome to the Bill Cartwright Show with Steve Cohen. Our special guest today is Peanut Louis Harper. Uh, Peanut, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me. Very, very honored that you thought of me. Oh, you are an amazing person. Now, uh, let's talk about this. Now, you grew up in San Francisco? Yes, born and raised, a, a proud native San Franciscan. Now, can you talk a little bit about your parents? Yes, you know, my parents, um, you know, they're, they're amazing people. My dad passed away um, many years ago, but my mom and dad, you know, really, you know, just very lucky to have had parents like that. My mom, she's 96 now, going strong. Oh. Um, and, you know, just, uh, you know, I know, you know, you had done a Zoom presentation with us and you talked about your dad and teaching you, you know, just how hard, you know, what a hard worker um, he was that that really influenced you and built a great foundation for you. So same, same for my parents too, you know, they just really instilled that hard work, um, never complaining about it, you know, raising five kids. I don't know how they did it. You know, we, we Tim and I only had two and that's a, been a lot of work. Um, but yeah, just to see, you know, how my parents, you know, raised us and just, you know, such hard workers never complain and everything was for the kids and anything they could do for the kids, you know, they would do and were there for us. Now, can you talk about when you were younger? Now, I think you're the youngest and talk about your siblings and talk about your introduction into tennis. Yes. Well, my mom, that's, that's all our mom. Um, she loved tennis. You know, she grew up, um, you know, in Seattle on a farm, you know, one of nine uh, kids. And I don't know how her and one of her other sisters discovered tennis, but they just loved it. And they would sneak out to a tennis court and try and play. And their older sister, you know, would say, hey, you have to come back to the farm and work. So I think it was just her love just was because any time that they got to go out and play, that it was such a treat. Um, so, you know, when she met my dad, I think when she moved to San Francisco, met my dad and, you know, still had that love of tennis um, and, you know, started raising a family. My older sister, Marcy, um, who was also a pro tennis player, um, but she's seven years older than me. So I think my mom just thought, hey, I want to get the kids out of the house and do something fun, get them out in the sunshine. So I'm going to take all five of you <laughs> to the playground. Um, and, you know, Marcy and Cece and my older brother, Ronnie, you know, and Marisa, you know, they, you know, as we all got older, we all got a chance to be on the tennis court more and more, but mostly it was just Marcy in the beginning. And then my mom would just say, okay, you guys just go down to the playground and play for a little bit and then just come back in a couple hours. So this is back in the days, right? That was safe to do. Um, and then, you know, we would just, you know, back in the days they, they had these, um, tennis trainers. So they were like these like little, I don't know, five, 10 pound metal weights. And then attached to it was like elastic ball, I mean, elastic string with a tennis ball at the end. So my mom would just put that on the side of the court. And why my sister Marcy was, you know, on the tennis court hitting, you know, the rest of us, we'd just be on this little, you know, training, tennis training, um, uh, little thing and hitting balls by ourselves, you know, four or five years old and, and just, uh, you know, getting our first training at hand-eye coordination. So let me ask you, when was your first like tennis tournament that you played in? How, how old were you? You know, I started, so when we started, um, you know, when we moved up to the Richmond uh, district, you know, the avenues in San Francisco were kind of close to Golden Gate Park. So most of our early years playing tennis was out at Golden Gate Park. You know, my mom would just drop us off and, you know, we'd play there all day. Um, so my first tournament was at the age of seven. And wow. I know a lot of my pro tennis friends that you remember your first tennis tournament. And I've yet to hear one say that they didn't get beat like 0-0 in their first match. So I remember my first match at seven. I think I lost 0-1. And I always say, I don't remember liking that, but, <laughs> but you know, um, you know, so that was just uh, a, a good memory because, you know, I think that just gave me a taste for competition and, you know, wanting to like, oh gosh, I better practice more. I don't want that to happen too often. So as you get older, talk about when you were in high school and 
um, what kind of athlete were you then? Were you the top of the uh, of, of the realm then, or were you still developing your game? You know, I think just the got lucky because you know my older siblings, you know, were playing tennis and competitive tennis. It was easy for me just to follow in their path. So, you know, playing my first ten and unders at seven years old. Um, and then you move on to the 12 and unders and, and you get two years in each age division. And we kind of, you know, had, um, you know, a good um, fortune of doing well in juniors. And, um, you know, we were like number one in the NorCal, you know, one or two top always. Um, and so I think, you know, by the time I got to high school, um, you know, we were already playing nationals and, you know, it's number one in the nation in the 12s and in the 16s. Um, so, you know, just had some good fortune to have some success early on. Um, you know, so, you know, by the time I played in high school, you know, I played on the boys high school team one year, I think. And that oh. was kind of a, a crazy experience because I don't know if the guys enjoyed having a girl on the team <laughs> that much. <laughs> Um, and then we played this tournament, Aw City, which was held at Golden Gate Park. And, you know, that's, that was always a interesting memory because a lot of the guys that I played against were just, you know, friends that, you know, we grew up playing against already at Golden Gate Park. But I just remember playing one of the guys and then all the other guy friends, you know, were rooting for the guy, not me. And I remember mm -hmm. like, hey, wait a minute, I'm your friend too. Um, so that was my high school tennis memory. So I didn't, I don't know if I played maybe a, a next year, maybe part of it, but I, I think I just decided that wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. Talk about which high school you went to and talk about uh, your rival or did, or did you have one when you were in high school? Well, I went to George Washington high school and uh, you know, that was where my, um, older sister Marisa and, and Cece went also. My older brother Ronnie and Marcy went to Lowell. So that was always a top school back then and still is. Um, you know, watch, you know, by the time I got to high school, because I was playing so much tennis, you know, I really didn't spend that much time in high school, you know, by the time I think I I got, you know, was able to be excused from PE because, you know, my tennis, my practice kind of counted for that. So my high school years, I feel like I was just there till like 12 or one o'clock and then boom, my mom would pick me up and then we'd be out at Golden Gate Park practicing until it got dark. Um, so I kind of didn't have that much of a high school social experience. Um, you know, it really was our, our family and friends, you know, was really out at Golden Gate Park. Um, you know, so that was kind of it. I just did my classes went home, went out to go and get park, practiced hours, came home, ate, did my homework, and then repeat. Um, so you're leaving high school. Talk about how did you end up going to USF? How, how did that happen? Well, actually, my older brother, Ronnie, and um, Cece, and Marisa, they all went to USF. Everybody. Um, yeah, everybody. You know, Marcy being the oldest, and she was kind of, you know, um, you know, I followed in her track to she had done well in pros and then, you know, um, doing well in juniors enough to kind of consider um, trying pros myself, you know, it just seemed like there's this small window where you can either decide to turn pro after juniors or go to college. And I as a as a junior, I had played some pro tournaments as an amateur and did well enough to get a ranking so I could get into some pro tournaments. And so that kind of made the decision for me. I actually did not go to college, um, but, you know, it, it was something that, you know, obviously my parents, you know, education is very important. Um, but, you know, we just, uh, you know, I think it just seemed an easy step because my older sister had already turned pro um and then you know just for me to take that opportunity while that small window is open to try and see how i could do on the pro circuit um you know i just had to take it and you know it turned out to be okay can you talk about your first big pro tournament so that's an interesting one too because 
Um, so right after National 18th, that's in August, um, you know, you make that big decision. Okay, the next tournament I play, I'm going to play as a pro. And my first um, match was against Renee Richards. And wow. at that time, you know, there was, uh, you know, um, kind of a, you know, interesting time where, you know, she was, you know, people were like, oh my gosh, you're going to play against Renee Richards. And my mom was like, oh no, you're going to, you know, she's, she's strong. Da, da, da. And I just like, at that time I was only just 18. And I think Renee was like 40 years old. And my mom's like, oh gosh, you know, oh, that's such a bad draw. And, you know, when you're 18 and you're playing against a 40 year old at that time, you're going, oh my gosh, okay. Well, 40 sounds kind of old, you know. <laughs> Um, I think I'll be okay. And, you know, I, I should be able, you know, being 18 years old to, you know, fitness should be decent. And, um, and I won that match. So that was kind of a fun first, you know, pro match for me. Um, and then the U S open was right after that too. Uh, I've been fortunate enough and Steve too, to go to many U S opens. Talk about that. Oh gosh. You know, well, my first U S open was actually, when it was still at Forest Hills. So I don't know if you were, uh, it being played there. And that was just like, gosh, the I still have that image in my head. And, um, you know, playing Nancy Ritchie, another, you know, original nine and legend and someone I grew up, you know, watching all of the original nines, you know, Billie Jean King. Um, and that was just an amazing experience where you, I would take the subway up to Forest Hills with my sister, Marcy, and we walk through the neighborhood to the, you know, through the neighborhood, get our sandwich and then go get out to Forest Hills and get ready for our match. But, you know, those that wouldn't happen today. Right. Because, you know, the players you're picked up in a car and you're driven straight out to Flushing Meadows. Um, but that was just a, a, a pretty neat thing to experience, too. And, and just, uh, you know, being in the traditional, the, the, you know, Forest Hills is just like such a big part of tennis history. I, I, I gotta ask uh, because it's, you know for for everybody uh, Wimbledon. What was Wimbledon like? That had to be amazing. You know, people ask me what my favorite tournament is. That's like you know right up there because it's so special. I I love the tradition. When you go in, it's like it's magical when you walk in there, and I I'm pretty sure most most of the pro players will say that. Um, and Gosh, I played my first uh, Wimbledon as a junior, junior Wimbledon. And, you know, going there for the first time and then being, you know, fortunate enough to play there, you know, gosh, to my last one was in 92. And from all that time, it's like nothing changes. You know, you go there and it's the same, you know, beautiful green, the whole country, it's all about Wimbledon. And you don't get that in a lot of, you know, um, you know, places you go, it, you know, there's so much going on everywhere. But, you know, it's almost like for that period of time, it's all about Wimbledon. And it's really, you know, magical. And I know a, a favorite of a lot of the tennis players. Um, I had a few center court um, experiences, which sounds exciting on paper, but not when you're actually having to do it, because that means you're playing against some someone really, really, really good. <laughs> And a lot, a lot of people are going to get to see you get um, trounced by one of them. Um, you know, one of them was Steffi Graf. And, um, you know, people are like, oh, my God, you got to play Steffi Graf on center court. I'm like, mm, that wasn't as fun as it sounds. <laughs> but I did get a game. So I'm very proud of that game because it was really hard to get that game. Um, but, you know, that was that was a really fun experience in a way where, you know, looking back, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, just uh, – it's surreal when you walk out there because it's as as many people that's out there. It's it's quiet too, um, and I think the most nervous part of it is being in that waiting room before you go out on the center center court, um, and you just want like gosh, you just want to get out there and hit that first ball so you can just kind of block all that out. Well, um, I, I took a French class once, but so but tell me about the French Open. Oh, the French Open. Okay, the French Open. Being a, a NorCal girl, we don't have clay court tournaments. In, or I don't know if there's any clay court tournaments in, in California, or at least back then, there might be now. 
So clay court is clay is not my favorite surface. So although we played some junior tournaments on clay back east, you know, going on red clay over, you know, the French Open was like, mm, okay, we did it. I did it as a junior because I played the French Open juniors, and I'm like, okay, I didn't do that well then on it. I'm like, I don't think I want to play on red clay anymore. So my husband Tim, um, you know. I think it took many years and he says, okay, I want to go to French Open. Let's go play French Open. I'm like, oh God, I really don't like red clay. But so I played it and it reminded me why I didn't like red clay. I think I had a, a three hour match on it. I did end up winning that, but I was so sore the next day. And if you don't know how to slide on clay, playing on clay is really hard. Wow. <laughs> so. You know, it it, uh, it makes tennis a lot harder if you're not, uh, if you didn't grow up on clay and know how to play on it. Talk about the differences of playing in doubles and mixed doubles, or is oh, there gosh. a difference? I love doubles. I mean, I think, you know, growing up, you know, I probably, you know, singles was more, you know, where I had a lot of um, success, but doubles, especially later in my career, I enjoyed it so much more because you have a you have someone there you can talk to, you know, uh, takes down a lot of the nerves that you might have. Um, just being able to have a buddy out there, or someone to practice with, because later in the week in a tournament, you know, as soon as um, you know players lose, you leave, you you go on to the next tournament. But in doubles, you know, it's kind of nice because you always have your partner there to practice with and and just uh, kind of pass pass the day with because there's a lot of sitting around you know at tournaments a lot of piddling I say, I say we all become professional piddlers because you just learn how to entertain yourself and keep busy um, but at the same time kind of you know uh, stay um, positive and not waste too much energy and things like that um, so I really like doubles mixed doubles was super fun because you know you have a guy there that just you know you serve, they poach, they put it away. You know, it's that simple. Um, you know, the guys, you know, it's so fun because it's just like, wow, is that that double? No, I like this. <laughs> All I had to do was hit a return, then they poach and put it away. That was fun. Uh, talk about your best uh, or most fun partner that you had, guys and gals. Oh, gosh. You know, I got to play with a, a lot of different partners because, um, you know, it, it could be like where you have a partner, you're doing really well, you know, maybe for a year you play together and then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, for no reason, maybe you guys, you know, we don't, we start not having as much success and, and you kind of like, oh gosh, you know, maybe we'll try, you know, with another partner. Um, so for me being a, a ground stroker, I always tried to find partners that were really good at the net to complement. Um, and that seemed to be like what a net player was also looking for, you know, someone that was maybe, you know, had some good ground strokes to help set them up. Um, but, you know, mixed doubles too, you know, it was just kind of fun. And it, it's not like sometimes they're planned out who you're going to play with. You just kind of show up, especially to these Grand Slam tournaments. And we don't see the guys, you know, much because they, they have their own tournaments. So you just kind of go up and sign up and say, who's looking for a a partner in mixed doubles and and you know sometimes you just meet them for the first time um, and play together so it's kind of fun just like that not to have things so planned out you know you had a you had a very good career obviously over many a lot of years and you know, I, have, I have questions about your tennis career and what you've done post tennis but how do you feel looking back over all these years most people haven't accomplished what you've accomplished and how has your perspective changed over time you know, I, I'm so thankful, you know, I think my mom to put us in tennis. Um, pro tennis wasn't really something like, you know, how it is today where parents like, oh, you know, I'll put my kids in this sport and maybe they'll get a college scholarship or maybe they'll get pro, you know, be a pro athlete. My mom just did it for the pure, you know, reason of just getting her kids outside to do something fun. And, you know, for all of us, you know, my older sister, Marcy, ended up turning pro as a top pro. Uh, my brother, Ronnie, uh, sister, uh, Cece and Marisa, they all ended up with great careers. Um, they played number one at USF on the tennis team. And, um, awesome. you know, and then they went on to um, have great careers teaching tennis. Um, so 
I love to, I mean, tennis has given me so much and, you know, just really grateful for, um, you know, all the friends that, you know, I've met, you know, and we're still friends from many from junior days to our pro days to now long retired pros. Um, so, you know, I, I have really great memories of being on the tour and especially in the era that, you know, I was fortunate to grow up in where we didn't have like entourages. We always like, we could barely afford to, you know, pay for our own expenses. Um, and our entourage was our fellow players, our people that we competed against. So um, we roomed together, practiced together. Uh, you know, I don't know if that happens today, but, you know, I feel very fortunate that, you know, I had that experience. And could you tell us about what you're doing now? I see you have the pyramid of success behind you and that's very cool. Yeah. Yes, oh my gosh. and. Well, we were very honored to have Bill as a special guest a couple of years ago. Um, you know, so um, back in, gosh, 2001, um, a good friend of ours, uh, Steve Jamison, he's a professional author, and he did uh, his first book. He's done like eight books with Coach John Wooden, but he gave us the first one called Wooden, The Little Blue Book. And I read it and I just like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like everything in there, I, I feel like if my parents could write a book, it would be the same values and lessons. And I just, you know, Tim and I, our kids were young at the time. And I just like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm going to use, you know, we're going to use this with our kids and, you know, all his great maxims and, you know, failing to prepare, preparing to fail. And, um, you know, just all these great things, like how he words things, um, his definition of success, you know, which I know, you know, Bill, you can relate to being just, you're a world-class athlete and, you know, everything is like, did you win or did you lose? Did you win the championships? Did you have a bad season? And, you know, a lot of people around you kind of, you know, that's how they value or see you as like, what's your ranking? Um, you know, you know, what did you win? How much money did you make? And his definition of success is just, you know, it's so healthy and so positive. And it's just all about, you know, the peace of mind you get from knowing that you did your best. And I just like, oh my gosh, I, you know, that hits it right on the head. I don't know if you can think of a, a better definition of success than that. And, you know, that became a passion where, you know, I started bugging Steve. I was like, oh my gosh, Steve, you and coach have got to put this material in a book for parents and kids. You know, I want this book. Um, I want to read it to our kids. And long story short, the idea came up. Steve said um, a lot of people were bugging coach Wooden to do a children's book. And so he asked coach if he was interested in doing that project and coach said yes and Steve said peanut well do you want to help on it I'm like oh my gosh yes you know I would love to any you know parent suggestions or whatever um and so it came out in 2003 and we found out a lot of teachers are using it as their character education um theme and they you know to teach their students about um coach wins pyramid success and long story shorter, um, that kind of encouraged Tim and I to start our children's nonprofit, Harper for Kids. And we're going on our 14th year. We work with about 70 schools and, um, you know, have reached, you know, I think in the, our maybe 75, over 75,000 students now. Our program's free, but it's really just about, you know, helping students think about a positive way to define success for themselves and bringing in amazing role models like Bill to share his life lessons um, and just what successful people look like, what they act like, how they are, um, you know, cause I can't imagine, you know, there's anything more important than helping kids, you know, try and help them be the best person they can be. Um, and it's as simple as that. So, and, and I want to say, Bill, you know, gosh, I have, you know, recorded a pages of the things that you had said that were so, you know, so important. And one of these things I really loved, you said, you can only hit what you aim at and you have to aim high. So I, I think about that all the time and, you know, just, uh, you know, so appreciative that you were a special guest and, you know, just, you know, just absorbed all those great life lessons that you shared with the students. Oh, that was, that's, that's awesome. And it's also just, you summed it up by your best effort. If I can get my best effort, the best I can play, uh, we're done. So um, 
if I get your best effort, we've got something really, really special. So that's really inspiring. And it's, it's something that should be really thought about, especially by parents, kids, uh, especially the parents, because as we know, we can be a little tough on our kids. On that note, uh, let's talk about your kids. What are they up to? Oh, <laughs> yes, we're, we're very proud of our kids. And, you know, um, just really, there's nothing more important. And, you know, just helping to, you know, support them and, you know, trying to be like the parents that, you know, you know, fortunately, my parents and I want to try and be like a, a great parent like they were for us and, you know, just support them in whatever, whatever they do, you know, our daughter, Casey, uh, USF alum. And, you know, it just, uh, you know, it's six years now, she's now at Genentech and has a really great career there. Um, you know, and, and loves it. And she worked really hard trying, you know, for her biochem um, major at USF and, you know, had a really great experience there and, and loved her years there. Um, and then our son, Jared, he's a singer songwriter and embarking on, you know, his path. So it's really neat just to kind of see them go after, you know, their passions and nothing to do with tennis, <laughs> far removed from tennis. But, um, you know, it, it's so important to let them pick their own path. And, you know, as parents, you just have to do everything you can to support them. And I know, you know, um, I couldn't have been a, had a career in professional tennis if it wasn't the support of my, my parents and my family and, you know, them just always being there for us. Awesome. Awesome. So special. Peanut, you're, you're amazing. Thank you so much <laughs> for being on. Um, oh, really thank you for having me. To, uh, spending some time with you and uh, you're doing such great thing with those kids. Uh, that's really special. And um, we really appreciate you, you being on. Thank you. And then we're going to get you on the tennis court. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of work. There's a lot of rust down there. A lot of rust. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've only played twice since last March, so I got to remember how to. 